Joined by Robert Taylor, political commentator. I think it's worth saying, Robert, at this point, that tonight is the first TV debate. Um, it's the head-to-head, -head, Starmer versus Sunak. Could this be a game-changer for... Re Could this be the bit of good news we've been talking about that's missing for the Conservatives? Well, it, it's a real long shot. In, in this country, we don't tend to have game-changers in these big TV debates yeah. between the politicians. Uh, those will, with long memories will remember Clegg mania in 2010 after the first debate, but that fizzled out by the time of the election. And I can't really remember in all that time a real game changing moment in the uh, in the president in the debates, not presidential debates. But Rishi Sunak will be desperately hoping he has one tonight because that might be his last chance. And the trouble with it, of course, is that the. Oh, the trouble for Rishi Sunak is that he's got most... Well, in many respects, he's got most to lose. I think this is slightly... Given the the weight of uh, opinion, according to the polls, that's behind Keir Starmer, um, unusually, which is maybe why he hasn't agreed to as many as he could have done, um, he, he's, he could have quite a lot to lose in this. But of the two of them, I mean, they're neither are the greatest orators. And I, I just imagine a fairly sort of vanilla kind of debate. There's not going to be any fireworks in this, is there? Well, Starmer will certainly be hoping for a vanilla debate. He'll be hoping that he just comes out unscathed. It's what's called his Ming vase strategy, just doesn't want to drop the vase. Yeah. But Sunak needs fireworks. Sunak needs to absolutely nail Starmer for flip-flopping on everything he said he believed just four years ago. Sunak needs to go for the jugular. You can't play it safe tonight, Sunak. You have to manufacture that game-changing moment, and that means go on the attack. You can't play it safe. He has to go on the attack, and that means going for the leader of the Labour Party. And does that mean... I, 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 I'm trying to imagine what that means now. I mean, in terms of, you know, immigration, uh, there doesn't seem to really be much going on there. We've had the headline that uh, the, the, uh, the Tory party won't be drawn on numbers. The Tories are pledging an annual cap on migration. But James Cleverley won't put a number on that. And, of course, at the weekend, Yvette Cooper was interviewed. She, uh, she, she's going to you know, reduce uh, immigration. She also won't put a number on that, which is where the likes of, to go back to Nigel Farage, people like him say, actually, I'm looking for you know, net zero when it comes to immigration. That's my aim. Um, and that's very firm, definitive stuff. It's quite wishy-washy. So I sense you're going to have a pretty much very similar kind of views on the big issues of the day. Well, this is the problem that Starmer, having having flip flopped on all his election pro promises to become Labour leader, is now basically the same as Sunak. He's not going to do anything different other than put VAT on school fees. So all this stuff about we're going to get change under a Labour government. Well, no, you're not. If start if you believe what Starmer says he's going to do, he's going to do nothing. And that does make it more difficult. Uh, Ian, you're absolutely right for Sunak, because Sunak can hardly go in with a slogan well, look, this man, Starmer, is going to be even worse than me. That's not going to work. So he has to go on the attack with Starmer's own record. And he yeah. has to try and steer the debate towards what Starmer has always said and believed to get to where he wants to be, but what he's now saying and believing, which is the absolute reverse, to try and become Prime Minister. Indeed. Uh, another big story, Joey Essex is favourite to win Love Island. Sorry, I don't know how that got in our script. Let's ignore that one. Unless, you, of course, you have a view on it, Robert, which I know you love. None at all. You, none love, at all. you love that programme. Uh, let's talk a little moment about Angela Rayner as well. She wants to rid the world of nuclear weapons. I mean, this is exactly what Keir Starmer needs right now, isn't it? Angela Rayner shouting from the back seat. Well, yeah, I mean, she got him to change his mind over Diane Abbott, it seems, a week ago, or certainly led that that sort of view. And now she's coming up with a new policy on nuclear weapons, just when Starmer has gone on record saying that as a responsible prime minister, he would be prepared to press the button. Yeah. And here's Angela Rayner, his deputy, uh, coming out with something completely different. It's not a match made in heaven, that one, by any means. But uh, he can't get rid of her.
Except, no, he can't, of course, because she's not appointed by him. Final story, disturbing one about ultra-processed foods. I, I guess you could sort of put this under the umbrella of tell us something we didn't at least suspect. Uh, but they're being blamed for more young people than ever developing cancer. Cases rising twice as fast among the under-50s as in the elderly. Yeah, a really sad story. Um, you know, it's obviously that ultra-processed food is cheap. It's easy. You don't need to know how to cook in order to, to do it. So it's easy to feed a family in a cost-of-living crisis. But it seems that we're all over-relying on it. It's a big danger to health.